Automotive Magazine with your host, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week 89. We're glad to have you with us. In the past year, we've tested or shown you Pontiac's Grand Prix, Oldsmobile's Cutlass Supreme, and Buick's Regal. All three cars are new front drive GM intermediates, cars that are known in the industry as W bodies. Chevrolet last year didn't get a version of the W body to sell, but now they have one. It's called Aluminum, and Chevrolet prefers to think of it as the first of its kind rather than the last. And in a way, it is. It's the first four-door W body. The other divisions won't get theirs until next year. And being the first new four-door GM Intermediate, it'll have to be compared to Ford's Taurus, a benchmark that stands pretty tall. So the Lumina is a very important car indeed for Chevrolet and for General Motors. Let's see how it stands up. Chevrolet is pulling up all the publicity stops to get the country intrigued about the entire Lumina lineup. Lumina and lights flew high above all the major auto shows this spring. Under it stood the Lumina four-door sedan you can buy now. Two other Luminas will be introduced in the summer and fall, a NASCAR-bound coupe and the APV minivan that will serve in place of a Lumina station wagon. All three are front-wheel drive and aimed at the volume, value-oriented American middle-class family. For added punch, Chevrolet has enlisted the help of Walt Disney and hopes to animate early Lumina sales. TV commercials note that the Luminas are the official vehicles for the new Disney MGM Studios theme park at Disney World in Florida. What could be more wholesome and family-oriented than that? Wholesome is a good way to describe our first impression of the Lumina. Even in upscale Euro trim, the Lumina is a safe but in some ways different look for Chevrolet. The front end does borrow from the Corsica with a pointed grille opening and flush headlights. Clear coat paint is standard. Wheelbase is two and a half inches greater than in the Celebrity it replaces, and an inch and a half more than arch rival Taurus. At the rear, there are the trademark Chevy tail lamps, but the angles are unusual for a GM car, with a broad sweep around into the fenders. You have to give Chevrolet credit for giving the Lumina styling that is different from Taurus and its many imitators. Actually, we think the Lumina's shape has more in common with the Honda Accord sedan. From the slope of the hood to the shape of the side glass to the curve of the rear fenders, there is a lot of similarity. That similarity is even more obvious inside. Like the Honda, the large glass areas end low on the doors with the instrument panel at the same height. As in the Honda, you sit tall in the Lumina and visibility is excellent in all directions. This contrasts sharply with the more closed-in cabin of the Taurus. Most of the Lumina's wheelbase advantage is used to provide unusually good front and rear leg room, the most in its class. Room in the back seat is especially generous. There's a lot of headroom and enough shoulder room for three adults. Outboard shoulder belts are standard. The only thing we don't like is the flabby bottom seat cushions. They compress forward and make you feel like you're going to slide off. The same is true of the front seats. More support is needed here. On the other hand, back support is good and a tilt wheel means most drivers can find a comfortable position. Tall drivers, however, did complain that wheel well intrusion made it hard to find a comfortable rest for the left foot. The luminate dash is straightforward but spread out. The radio is easy to get to, but a dash lip hides part of the digital dial. We do appreciate the radio's large control knobs. The heat control uses large buttons and they are simple to comprehend, but you have to stretch to use them. Four large dash vents provide a good airflow to the back seat. Where our Lumina falls flat is with its standard gauge cluster. Knowing how fast you're going and how much fuel is aboard just isn't enough. At least the Taurus has a water temperature gauge. Also, we're amazed there is no trip odometer. Fortunately, this comprehensive cluster, shown in the owner's manual, will be added to production soon. The trunk is also large. The floor is long, flat, and wider than in the Fords. The trunk would be perfect if the liftover height was at bumper level, but it isn't. When so equipped, a convenient inside trunk release button resides under the dash near the steering wheel. Though our Euro edition had stiffer springs and shocks than the standard car, we found its ride to be smooth but firm. Sound level registered a quiet 67 decibels. Fuel economy is also good, with EPA ratings of 19 city and 29 highway. Our test returned an expected 24 miles per gallon. That's with the optional multi-point fuel-injected 3.1-liter V6 
and four-speed overdrive automatic transmission. The engine has 135 horsepower, 25 more than the standard 2.5-liter four-cylinder that you'll find in most rental and fleet cars. Acceleration with the V6 is commendable for a mainstream family sedan with a 0 to 60 time of 9.8 seconds. That's faster than a 3-liter Taurus, if not quite as fast as the 3.8-liter Ford. The quarter mile glided by in 17.9 seconds at 80 miles per hour. Shifts from the overdrive transmission were crisp, yet quite smooth. Owners will have to get used to a lazy throttle linkage that makes you push down quite a way before the engine reacts. The Lumina's brakes did react quickly thanks to a disc at each wheel. The standard Taurus uses drum brakes at the rear. Lumina stops from 60 to 127 feet on average with excellent directional stability. We did notice some fade and locking towards the end of our test, but it was easy for the driver to compensate. For a mainstream family car, the Euro Lumina also handles well. The car dives gently into corners and provides good information to the driver through the firm feeling and rather quick steering. You really aren't overly aware of the luminous size here, a good trait. With an all-independent suspension and standard anti-sway bars, you can make high-speed maneuvers with confidence. Body roll is much less than expected. When you top it off with an $11,883 base price, a typically equipped car will cost under $14,000. Even our $15,298 Euro stands up very well against its main competition. We like the Lumina's non-conformist styling, its large and airy interior, good V6 power, easy to modulate brakes, predictable handling, and good ride. We don't care for its spread out dash, minimal standard instrumentation, flabby seat cushions, and high trunk sill. In our safety check, the Lumina has standard front passive restraints and rear shoulder belts, but it's not available with anti-lock brakes. Even though it sets no new trends, the Lumina sedan is a very capable alternative to the all-conquering Taurus. With the coupe and minivan on their way, the Lumina lineup could be just what GM needs. A solid lineup of affordable family vehicles with few compromises. We'd say that alone is worth shouting about.